Muy buenos días a todos. Good morning to all. On behalf of the Inter-American Development Bank and the IDB Invest, we welcome you to the Green Bond Transparency Platform launch, greenbondtransparency.com, an initiative to promote green investments and to attract new private investors to Latin America and the Caribbean. El evento será en inglés y contará con servicios de interpretación en portugués y español. Si quieren escuchar la conversación en otro idioma, los invitamos a hacer clic en el icono del mundo que encuentran en la parte baja de su pantalla. The event will be in English with interpretation services to Spanish and Portuguese. If you want to hear the conversation in a different language, please click the world icon at the bottom of your screen and select the language. During the event, we invite you to share your thoughts and what has impacted you the most using our hashtag Bonos Verdes or Green Bonds. We will start the event thanks to the president, to the presence of Mauricio Claver Carone, president of the Inter-American Development Bank, who will give us the opening remarks. Adelante, Mauricio. If you're with us here today, it's because you agree that the post-COVID recovery offers a once-in-a-generation opportunity to accelerate the transition to climate resilient economies. It's an exciting prospect, but it's not guaranteed. Governments are facing extraordinary fiscal headwinds, and they can't possibly finance the transition on their own. Some estimates indicate that emerging markets will require more than $20 trillion in investments by 2030 to address climate change challenges. At best, the public sector will only be able to provide about a quarter of this amount. The good news is that as of 2020, the world's top 500 asset management firms were holding more than $100 trillion in private assets. Many of those firms are eager to place a bigger share of their portfolios in investments that meet strong environmental, social, and governance criteria, the famous ESGs. In the next five years, governments will have a historic opportunity to attract those investors. If they offer the right incentives and clear ground rules, trillions of dollars in private capital could flow into their countries in order to create jobs, reduce poverty, and build the low carbon energy and transportation infrastructure that we need. These investments could jumpstart growth while providing a host of social, environmental, and climate benefits. So how can we make sure that Latin America and the Caribbean take full advantage of this opportunity? We think development finance institutions like the IDB will have a key role to play in helping to set market signals and taking on risks that the private sector is not willing or capable of doing so at this time. We've been focused on enabling the development of capital markets and facilitating the issuance of green bonds, for example, because they offer a proven way of scaling up private investments in the green recovery. Over the past five years, the IDB group has supported some 30% of the green and sustainable bonds issued in the region, leveraging private funds, and of course, we're continuing to work on new issuances. Our region has been setting new benchmarks in this market, even during the pandemic. For example, we saw Ecuador issue the world's first sovereign social bond last year with a partial credit guarantee from the IDB. Mexico is also bringing a sustainability bond to the market, and Chile completed a sovereign local currency issuance, which was a first in our region. Latin America and the Caribbean has a huge potential for growth in this area. At present, our region accounts for just 2%, just 2% of the global green and sustainable bond market, which reached a record $1.1 trillion in 2020. To fulfill this potential, the most urgent priority is to improve market trust and to provide better comparable data to ensure that only quality investments are financed. This includes addressing investors' concerns over the use of green bond proceeds and the quality of impact reporting. Now, understandably, investors want to be sure that the proceeds of the bonds they invest in are used for the intended purpose of supporting green projects. And they also expect verifiable reports on the impacts of such investments. When answers to those questions are inconsistent or difficult, then investors are predictably reluctant to make bigger commitments. To help remove these obstacles, today we are launching the Green Bond Transparency Platform, an innovative digital tool that will help address investor concerns by bringing greater harmonization, standardization, and transparency to green bond reporting. This free, user-friendly platform will use blockchain technology to provide clear and reliable information. We've developed it in close consultation with key investment banks and professional investors, as well as external reviewers and standard setters. It's our contribution to a global movement that includes entities such as NASDAQ and the Luxembourg Stock Exchange, which are working on similar projects. Our green bond transparency platform will allow investors, issuers, reviewers, and underwriters to input or obtain details regarding each bond issue. It will include detailed data on the use of proceeds, their validation by third-party reviewers, as well as their impacts. We believe the platform will contribute to better governance and greater transparency, which will increase confidence levels amongst current and potential investors. And this will be an important element in our comprehensive strategy to help scale up the region's green bond market. 
While the pandemic has had devastating effects on our region and its people, the timing for green recovery is just right. Prior to the pandemic, investors were already focusing more closely on sustainability issues and markets were showing a heightened sensibility to climate related matters. Now, the conditions are set for putting Latin America and the Caribbean on investors' radars like never before. And I'm certain that if we work together, we can show the world that our region is a superb choice for a broad range of investment opportunities that will yield attractive returns while addressing pandemic related challenges and driving a strong post pandemic recovery. At this time, the recovery can be and should be painted green. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mauricio, for being here with us today and for your words. We appreciate your time and enthusiasm regarding green finance. This is an important day for the IDB group, and we want to thank you all for joining us as well. Before we start with our panel of experts, I would like to invite you to watch a 3.5 minute video explaining the platform key features. With Latin America and the Caribbean susceptible to frequent and intense climate events including hurricanes, heavy rains, floods and droughts, risks to the region's development are mounting. Successfully transitioning to a green economy requires shifting of trillions of dollars of private investments. Public sector financing alone is insufficient to tackle these challenges requiring the development of innovative financial instruments and promoting the capital markets to catalyze private investments and finance to tackle climate change. A new financial instrument, Green Bonds, is helping investors to include climate projects in their portfolios. Since 2014, with the first issuance in Latin America, for 200 million US dollars the annual issuance reached 7 billion dollars at the end of 2020 a 35-fold increase, and an aggregate of $24 billion. However, the Latin American and the Caribbean market still accounts for less than 2% relative to the overall $1 trillion global green bond market. As the green bond market expands, investors are demanding greater transparency and comparability in evaluating such instruments. Seeking a solution to promote transparency and comparability in the green bond market, the Inter-American Development Bank created the innovative digital green bond transparency platform, allowing everybody to analyze how proceeds are used and compare environmental performance among bond issuances. The green bond transparency platform uses blockchain DLT technology. It enables issuers to report on the use of proceeds and impacts of their bonds in a simple format. It provides external reviewers with a way to present their pre- and post-issuance conclusions and allows investors to know at any point in time the performance of specific bonds. Thereby the Green Bond Transparency Platform further promotes comparability and public information about the state of the region's green bond market. The platform makes it easy to answer questions including, which issuers have issued green bonds, in which currencies and markets. Which issuances received external reviews and certifications pre- and post-issuance? In which projects were the proceeds of green bonds invested? Which projects did create which environmental impact? What is the green bonds impact in the region's market and in investment portfolios? Which entities conducted the external reviews and what were its conclusions? Such transparency informs all market actors, builds trust, and will help attract new long-term investment exploring the opportunities of Latin America and the Caribbean. With green bonds becoming a transformational financial tool and closing the financing gap, the green bond transparency platform will become a replicable benchmark and model for other regions. If you are an issuer, external reviewer, investor, or other market stakeholder, then the green bond transparency platform will be an important addition to your market toolkit. The Green Bond Transparency Platform is made possible through a multi-stakeholder initiative of donors and key market actors. To learn more visit www.greenbondtransparency.com As you can see in less than four minutes, we did our best to summarize the potential and impact of this innovative platform. And now 
you will have the chance to learn from a wonderful panel of experts that are here with us today. So I'm happy to introduce you to Maria Neto, Principal Specialist from our Connectivity Markets and Finance Division, who will be our moderator. Adelante, Maria. Thank you very much, Adela. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, after many positive messages, actually, last week uh, from the Leaders Summit on Climate, uh, it's good to be here launching the Green Bond Transparency Platform for IDB, a very important tool to actually scale up the green bond market in the region. The platform consolidates a lot of work from the Inter-American Development Bank Group to scale up the capital markets for green and sustainable investments. And we are having, as Adela said, a wonderful panel to discuss about it today. Juan Quetere, Chief of the Division of Connectivity, Finance and Markets, will talk to us about how the Green Bond Transparency Platform came to play. Sean Kidney, the CEO of the Climate Bond Initiative, is going to give us a global overview of why uh, the post-issuance reporting and transparency is key for the credibility of our green bond market. Hema Sacristan, Chief Investment Officer of the IDB Invest, will give us a bit of an overview of what is the role of these markets to scale up private investments in the region. And finally, Juan Pablo Bonilla, Climate Change and Sustainable Development Sector Director Manager, will present us the IDB's ambitious plans for the region's green recovery. Without further delay, I wanted to pass to Juan Ketterer. And Juan, I would like to ask you, how did you get to start with the Green Bond Transparency Platform and what do you think is the expectation of this innovative tool? Well, thank you very much, Maria, for, for your question. And thank you all for being here with us today in this um, moment that is basically the presentation of our of our platform you know for for many years now the idv and idv invest and uh, and idv lab the group has been looking into ways of uh, fostering of uh, promoting the development of climate investments and one of the important things among this promotion of the climate investment was to make sure that the bond market developed properly. But after you know, several years of, uh, of, of trying to uh, help the cost of the, of the green uh, bond market, we still are in a situation in which there is a large potential for, in, for, for improvement, let's put it this way. And this potential for improvement basically is that we are in, in the region, Latin American and the Caribbean, at 2% of the GDP, more or less, uh, and we could be at 8% in terms of the issues of a green bond. So that is a fourth fold potential increase that can be realized without any organic uh, growth, just maybe catching up. So the whole question is how do we do this catching up? And we looked around, we worked with uh, Juan Pablo, we worked with Hema, we worked with uh, even Sean. I mean, everybody who's here kind of work on the same on the same kitchen, trying to find out what were the main roadblocks. And we came up with three things. One is the help, the need to help the issuers to understand better the market and to understand better how to issue properly. And that we have been doing. So we're you know, pretty advanced on that, on that uh, task. We haven't finished yet because there is a lot of uh, issues to go, but still. Second thing that we kind of look into is the characteristics of the, of the bonds themselves. And I will refer to that later. And the, thing th and the third thing that we look into is the structure of the market. And that's what I want to talk about because the structure of the market is the reason uh, of being of the uh, of the green bond transparency platform. The idea is that this market is imperfect, mostly because of informational reasons. There is there are other reasons as well, but mostly because informational reasons. And to give you just a taste of some basic figures. Uh, we know and we observe that among 
the whole uh, set of issuers, only 50% report uh, use of proceeds. The use of proceeds in our jargon is what you do with the money that you get out of issuing the bond that supposedly you have to apply it to climate investments or to climate projects. So that's understood that it is going to be this way, but still reporting has to be done to make sure that the investors, the ones who bought the bonds, you know, feel comfortable and feel confident that their money is put on the right type of investment. Second, second data, only 27% of the, of the issuers have been certified by the Climate Bond Initiative. This is also not so good or rather bad because that is a particular set of principles that uh, make sure that when you say that something is green, that an investment is green, it is actually green. So the fact that issuers do not adhere to these principles or to similar principles, uh, it's a very uh, sort of uh, uh, deficiency of the market. And the third, that insofar is not such a big deal, but in the future it will become an important big deal, is that the only only one percent of the issuers report impact. That is, not report that they have uh, allocated the resources to certain investments, but they do not report what is the climate impact of those investments. Okay, so if you put all together, plus one plus factor is, is that those who report report in a very heterogeneous manner. So if you put all this together, what happens is that it becomes very complicated for the and complicated and costly from the point of view of the potential investors to make sure that they actually are investing in green securities, in green instruments and green bonds. So that is a major deterrent for investors to, to accrue to, to this particular market. So that is the basic, you know, focus of the platform. The platform is being developed to try to tackle this informational problem. And trying to tackle this informational problem means to be able to deliver uh, information in a comparable, standardized, and is a, an easy sort of user-friendly way and free. That's very important. The platform will be free for, uh, for everybody. So that is something that we are hoping that will really uh, give an important kick, an important push to this, uh, to this uh, market in its development that we're hoping that will that grow at the rates that it should grow. You asked me another question, Maria, I think, and that is what are the expectations that we have for, for the future? And, uh, and the expectations that we have are that first of all, we start from day one in this platform having on it 30% of the market. That is very important. Day one, we start with 30% of the market. So the first expectation is that very shortly, we're gonna have 100% of the market. That's very reasonable, very uh, reachable, and we're hoping that this will happen pretty quick. When this platform is ongoing in this, in, this, in this way with critical mass, then we're hoping to expand the level of functionalities and services of the platform to make it, you know, and which ones we're gonna prioritize first, we don't know at this point because we have to talk to the users and to follow the path that serves the purpose of uh, furthering the interest of the market. And that's the major endeavor that we're gonna be setting for ourselves in the rest of the year and maybe the first quarter of, uh, of 2022. Parallel to that, we're also looking 
at the instrument itself. And we're looking at the, at the instrument at the, at the green bone itself. And we're looking at it from three different perspectives. One is the perspective of great enhancement. And the other perspective is the perspective of the legal, uh, legal content of the relationships of the bone that for those, I mean, that's maybe a little bit too technical, but which are basically contained in the prospectus. Because nowadays, uh, investing in the green investments is not a legal and binding condition for most issues. But if we can move that into the prospect, the prospectus of the bond, then it will become a legal and binding condition. That's one thing. And the second thing is we, with uh, our colleagues from Bit Invest, Gemma most likely will refer to that. And with the help of Juan Paulo, that is, uh, that is also supporting us very strongly from the public sector, we're developing uh, new instruments for create enhancing, not only the bonds themselves, but also the underlying uh, investments. So I think that uh, uh, I am a little bit, maybe even over time, but I am gonna stop here for if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juan. No, you were perfectly on time and uh, the points were very important. I think you highlighted the ambition to eventually get 100% insurers of the region and you highlighted the importance of the platform to uh, increase credibility for investors in this market as well as for issuers. And I think what you were saying is very important, the fact that we'll be testing, piloting this platform as we go and making it more relevant as the market also interacts with us. And that's very important. Uh, coming to Sean now, I would like Sean to provoke you on some of the comments that already were raised by Juan. Uh, Juan mentioned the heterogeneity and the issue of credibility. I wanted you to mention and talk to us about what you see precisely about the importance of accurate data relating to reporting the post issuance moment, and also from your experience with the taxonomies and now the different trends we see around the world, how can we use the platform also to promote uh, more credibility to the market? Sean, with you. Um, thank you so much, Maria. And thank you, Juan Kedra. Hey, thanks for this great project. I'm extremely happy this has now been launched. And I think it's got a, a chance of revolutionizing reporting and transparency in LATAM green bond markets and having a global influence, which is what we want to talk about. What is a green bond? Well, it's a pretty simple idea, really. It's a debt where you are promising to use the proceeds in a certain kind of fashion. That's it. Nothing more complicated. Well, of course, Maria would like to know how you're using the debt. She'd like to get some confirmation that you're using a debt, that what you put in the tin is what you actually do. And as we know, it doesn't always happen. Things happen, right? So that the reporting aspect and the transparency of that reporting becomes pretty critical to maintaining confidence by Maria, of course, that the green bonds are going to continue to grow and be successful going forward and that you're going to invest in the next one and the next one and the next one. So in the global market, we have this idea of regular reporting. I wouldn't say it's universal. In the global market, about 70% of all issuers report on their use of proceeds adequately, and about 57% report on both use of proceeds and impact measures, key performance indicators around impact measures. That's good, but nowhere near good enough. That's a whole pile of don't report. In LATAM, the numbers are smaller. It's 53% that report on use of proceeds. Folks, we've got to make this better. If we want to build confidence in this market, trust on the investors that the money is really being used in the way that we're saying we want to use it, we've got to let them know. We've got to report back. And we need to report back in a consistent fashion. We need to be able to compare apples of apples. We need to make it easier for the people who are reporting. Because if it's complicated for them, if they don't know what the models are, the templates, they're all over the place. And the truth is, there is no Latin American wide regulation of how to report. Well. There's no Latin American wide regulation of substance. So there's a reason why it's not yet a single government. So this is what this project is about. It's about providing 
the tools to support consistent issuance consists of reports, both use of proceeds and impacts to build confidence in the market. It's about making it easy for issuers to give them templates they can use. It's about making it easy for investors to find the reports that are filed. You can, in fact, if you're an investor, download everything in an Excel spreadsheet. That's pretty cool. And it's all free. It's all free because it's part of IDB's commitment to supporting the Latin American market. That is pretty cool in its own right. We know that our ability, our capacity to continue to invest is going to be dependent on our confidence that our money is used in the right kind of way. I mean, it's our money, it's our pension funds, our insurance funds. Of course, it's an understandable objective. We know that there are complications and it's not happening adequately, those percentages I've given you. Even within those percentages, 47% of Latin American issuers issuing both impact and use of proceeds report, less than half. There's inconsistencies, all sorts of different kinds of approaches to impact reporting. So this can make the difference really. You know, I, I'm, I'm uh, incredibly thrilled to be associated with this because I think that the growth of the market is dependent on this. If we don't get this right, we're not gonna see the growth. And Juan Ketra is perfectly right. We're tiny in Latin. This is crazy. We should be big. We should be able to make this a big market. And I think we will make it a big market with the debt issuance in the next two years as our economies reflate and are stimulated. And as interest rates settle down in this growth period, we have a reasonable shot at having a modest level of interest rates. We'll see more growth and it's going to be green and it will be green but let's get the framework for confidence right as part of that process. So this is foundational and a foundation for future growth. If we get people using this across the region, which is of course our intent, our expectation, uh, we will see that uh, much larger percentage of issuance being devoted to thematic issuance across the region and achieving our climate goals. And remember what we're trying to do here. We're actually trying to use an instrument to drive change by corporations, by governments, to drive real economy benefits for the future of our children. It's about sustainability of environment, sustainability around climate change impacts, both resilience and mitigation. And, and that's why this is so important. So Maria, thank you, Juan Ketra, thank you for bringing this to, to fruition. It's, a, it's an ex extraordinary honor to be able to be associated with this. Thanks a lot, Sean. Uh, I mean, you highlighted something important, which is the, the platform is also about issuers, is how we can make the life of these issuers easier and help them to navigate this amount of taxonomies and sometimes difficult uh, market that is developing. You know? So it's very important also that the platform can become a space for standardization you know, to bring up the discussion on standardization. And also you brought us now another point, which is important as well. We have a window of opportunity, a specific window of opportunity for the capital markets to grow over the next years. And I want to now to turn to Hema, Sacristan Hema, to ask what is your opinion? Uh, we know that the IDB Invest has supported over 20 issuers in the region, and there are many more opportunities for these private uh, issuers to participate in the markets. We'd like to get your uh, perception of what is this opportunity, this window of opportunity for Latin America recovery, and how do you see the thematic bond markets as, as a nice space for that? Thank you, Maria. It's a pleasure to stay with all of you today. Um, I would like to start um, congratulating you and um, giving, um, I mean, both uh, Juan Antonio Queterer and yourself uh, uh, really thank, uh, thanks in the name of Heidi Invest for your leadership on developing this tool. We have worked uh, together with you, but it's more than clear for all of us that you took the leadership on developing this tool. So beyond that, and answering your question is, is clear as well for all of us that the pandemic has devastated uh, our region, a putting a strain on, on government finance, uh, financing and uh, deepening inequalities that uh, have been uh, you know, uh, long, uh, I mean, for a long time we have, uh, we have been unable uh, to close. Therefore, there's an, an urgent need uh, for all of us to accelerate the recovery on the region and 
um, everyone, as you know, is talking about the role of the private sector and how the private sector could really play um, uh, you know, um, a role in this, in, in this recovery. And the issue is always how, how we do it. Uh, from our point of view, um, at the end, uh, the most important thing to take into account is the private sector as an engine, as an engine uh, to really invest, invest in the sustainable recovery. Uh, if we really want and they're not to have a more sustainable uh, future for all of us. Um, so in general, we have seen we have seen the last year quite a lot of um, green instances. Um, even though at the beginning of uh, of last year we saw an increase in, in both the social and the sustainability um, uh, bonds instances, uh, at the end of the year, green bonds really took uh, took. Um, speed and were able to close with a, a record year, both worldwide and in the regions. We saw some uh, private sector uh, issuers uh, in the region taking the leadership. Uh, for example, um, Bradesco. Bradesco, one of the largest banks in Brazil, issued the first uh, gender bond for 12 billion reais. Uh, and uh, basically, that bond um, attracted twice time the offer. In Mexico, Cadu Immobiliaria uh, issued the first uh, gender bond in the real estate sector in the region. Uh, it was certified by the Climate Bond Initiative. Uh, basically, it was around 500 million pesos. It was played at Viva, at the second largest, uh, I mean, at the second stock exchange in Mexico. And basically, we provided the guarantee, which uh, is quite important. And maybe later on, we can talk about the different products. But as uh, Juan Antonio mentioned, uh, we have been working in developing this new asset class to different kinds of financial products. Uh, sometimes uh, we buy um, entirely or partially these ones, but in most of the cases, we are willing to provide guarantees to attract uh, a different uh, and a more diverse pool of investors. In Uruguay, uh, BBVA, uh, one of the largest local banks, issued the first sustainable bond in the region, uh, sorry, in the, in the country. And even though uh, they are going to finance both uh, social and environmental projects, we put a lot of emphasis because we structure and we bought that first uh, green bond issuance. We put a lot of emphasis because we really wanted them to move the green agenda in the country. And as of today, uh, at least at least 20% of the projects are going to be related to energy efficiency and to uh, uh, sustainable cities. In this context, uh, we are uh, sure we are sure that uh, the companies in the region have a clear opportunity to adapt sustainable practices because they see uh, more and more that they might be able or they uh, could be able to attract more uh, investors. At the beginning, those investors were uh, from the international markets, but nowadays, little by little, we are seeing more and more local institutional investors and even investors in the retail arena that are getting interested, more and more interested in a sustainable investment. Only you see, and then at, at the number of signatory of the pre, of the principle of responsible investments uh, have grown exponentially in the last year. And we really see that the demand is there. So our work is to work with, uh, I mean, with both sides. On one hand, we encourage our clients to really, uh, to really issue uh, this kind of bonds. And on the other, we are um, helping our co-financiers and uh, investors to really think uh, in uh, these, um, these instruments as an opportunity, as an opportunity to really foster development in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heman. Just to let everybody know, I will come back with the last question just for everybody as a closing. Uh, but uh, Hema, I think it's very important that you were highlighting, first of all, that beyond just green, our region has been benefiting also from uh, social sustainable bonds and uh, the examples of gender bonds and some first social bonds is also very, uh, let's say, interesting to see. And particularly even with, as you mentioned, although we had a crisis, economically, it has been a great opportunity for the green and sustainable market, which is a positive sign for the recovery, at least from that side. Uh, 
And also very important messaging there on the local investors as well, not the local work on only with the local issuers, but also the investors. Moving to Juan Pablo, Juan Pablo is speaking about this opportunity of recovery uh, that we see. We know that IDB has very ambitious now plans on the green and sustainable recovery. And in a number of new sectors as well as biodiversity, would like to hear a bit from your side, how do you see these and how the markets can also support this ambitious plan from IDB? Thank you, Maria. And first of all, I wanted to congratulate you, Juan and the whole team uh, of the IDB group uh, with HEMA that has been working on this platform. As uh, Shan said, uh, we have seen this gap for a long time and uh, it's a great result to see how digital tools, how blockchain help to, to fill out that, that gap and uh, will strengthen the development of, of green bonds and I would say sustainable finance in general uh, in the region. Uh, as, uh, as our president has uh, mentioned, one of the key pillars of the vision 2025 of the bank will be climate and sustainability and uh, the recovery of Latin America and the Caribbean has to be green, has to be sustainable, has to be inclusive. We're developing with the different sectors of the bank, what that means. And uh, a key issue will be sustainable infrastructure. I think the region is advancing every day more with re renewable energy. Uh, and that makes a very strong connection with electromobility. I think it's the next phase to start working every day in electromobility, a uh, big challenge to work with cities, so national levels, and the transport sector in linking that with renewable energy as well and energy efficiency. But uh, the bank is working in more than 18 countries right now, the infrastructure department leading this effort about electromobility. And I know the coordination with uh, Bid Invest will be key for this, to also support the private sector to invest in different PPPs related to, to this kind of issues. Um, rural development, I think is gonna be very important um, in terms of our rural development and sustainable land use. Uh, everybody talks about forestry in the region, but I think that needs to be part of the rural development and rural recovery agenda. And again, connectivity is gonna be a very important part of that agenda. As you know, uh, our president announced uh, a new initiative of the bank for these five years for the Amazon uh, with four pillars. It is bioeconomy, social capital, sustainable land use, forestry, sustainable cities, sustainable infrastructure, it's a very broad approach. Uh, but at the end, it's about rural development and how that is part of the, of the recovery as well. A key issue, Maria, for, for the Caribbean, for Central America, and for, for many coastal cities will be resiliency. How we have to support not only our governments, but the subnationals and the private sector to build resiliency. This starts from land use and planning, from codes, but at the same time to, to bring nature-based solutions. And I'm very glad you pointed out the, the agenda of biodiversity. I think the bank uh, and the group in general is moving ahead to show the link of biodiversity and climate for the future. That's why we have moved our natural development, uh, natural capital lab and biodiversity agenda as part of the climate agenda to start making this link and see how nature-based solutions are gonna be part of the solution for resilience. I always talk about mangroves in the Caribbean and the importance of a blue bond for the future in the Caribbean in terms of restructuring of debt. So I think this platform is an initial point for green bonds, but at the end, as one explained, the bonds will be an instrument for many of the issues that I mentioned to start working with cities. Uh, in our annual meeting, we talk about a very important operation for Barranquilla to become the first biodiversity of Colombia, the operation for Barranquilla will have a very important component of resiliency to flooding, to climate change, but at the same time, how nature-based solutions will support employment, uh, recovery, but at the same time, resiliency in the city. But the bonds, as Juan said, in the future could complement these efforts, not only to mobilize resources, but to something very important, Juan, that is strengthening the credit worthiness of this city for the future. So I, I see, and uh, talking about the Amazon, Maria, uh, we have talked about this. Uh, I hope we can also start working with the ministers of finance in the Amazon countries to thought about Amazon bonds, not only from the public side, but I hope him also from the banks, private sector banks that are working in, in Amazon territories. So just to finalize, uh, I see this as, very, as a very important effort uh, to connect different, I would say, stakeholders 
in the bond market and the development of, of green bonds that will be a very important tool in the future for cities, for rural development, uh, for private sector, of course, and to be linked with biodiversity, as you pointed out, Maria, and uh, hopefully with the blue agenda that is gonna be as important as green to put all of this together in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Juan Pablo. I will come back now to you, Juan. I think uh, uh, Juan Pablo mentioned a couple of things which are important. Uh, the green bond markets at the beginning were more focused on renewable energy and, and some of the low hanging fruits. But as Juan Pablo was mentioning in our region, we do have huge potential of other sectors as well, including transport, the electromobility market, including the biodiversity opportunities, but also other opportunities as well said in terms of uh, promoting also structuring at cities, bond markets, sovereign bonds, and other types of uh, uh, issuers. Juan, uh, from your perspective, you were mentioning a bit about our instruments and different ways to develop the markets. Maybe the last words and closing words on what you think is next there, uh, not only with the platform, but also with our support as a group, uh, if you want to have some final remarks. Yes, uh, thank you, Maria. Yes, indeed. I think that now we're in a situation in which we have to be really sort of careful because we have to, on, one, on the one hand, try to push and to support these type of initiatives. But on the other hand, we cannot support confusion and disconcert. So that's why this platform, I believe, that brings an additional value in this context, because now we have the opportunity to keep contained the, the entropy of the information, let's put it this way, contain it within the platform and be able to expand the reach and the, in the variety of instruments that we can provide the region uh, to fund these different initiatives with. So I think that this is something that has double uh, interest, not only for the green bonds that it's already been proven and there is no more discussion about that, but also for the new type of issues, new type of instruments that will be different in terms of their profile as financial instruments and also as their application in terms of what it is that they are funding. And I believe that that is one of the extensions, easy extensions of a platform that I was talking uh, before as in the near future, being able to provide additional services. So that is, I think, one of the important points that needs to be uh, discussed and taken into account. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. So lots to come also from our side in rethinking a bit the kinds of instruments we make available to accompany all these sectors. Sean, from your side, you have been working in many regions. You were showing that our region is not so well in terms of post issue reporting, but also we were mentioning that we still are only 2% of this global market. What from your point of view is there exciting that we should take care of and you know, thinking about the future, if we were talking to Latin America in the green and sustainable bond market, how can we help Juan Pablo, uh, our team of uh, him and Juan, to actually put together a more ambitious plan to increase this percentage of the, the green bond market from Latin America globally? Get the sovereigns right. We're going to see a massive growth of sovereigns this year. It's a very sl small percentage. It's going to go through the roof. F first in Europe, where, well, sovereign, subnational, whatever we might call it, the European Commission, is has already issued 33 million of social bonds and will do more, but it's going to issue 225 uh, billion euros of green bonds alone. Now that will have a big market boost effect, liquidity, price, benchmark pricing, etc. Uh, and many investors are hanging out for it, and it'll draw more investors out. On the back of that, you will see a lot more sovereigns around the world come to market. We already know that there are a number of sovereigns, as you know, in the region who are considering issuance on the back of the successful bonds so far, especially the Chilean sovereigns in pesos, dollars and euros, now that IDB was so important to, it's important to get out. So let's work with those sovereigns, get them into the platform, 
get them reporting and transparency, because if they do it a certain way, it's much easier to tell everyone else to get with the program. Uh, so that's the first and most important tactic. Globally, I think we need to do the same thing. I think we need to be looking at how we encourage sovereigns to use this platform. I want this platform to go global, as you can tell, um, to grow the market. We need to be working, treating sovereigns as they are in normal bond markets, as the demonstration issuer in a market. Not only the liquidity provider, not only the benchmark pricing provider, the yield provider, but also the demonstration issuer for how to do it right. And if they can do it in a way which is modular, uses the template and show how it's easier for the others, then everyone will come with the program. Um, so that's my most important advice. Of course, there are other actors that are important. I mean, development banks like FIRA in Mexico are important because they're influential, they set a metal, but nothing beats a sovereign. And let's get them all done. You know, Colombia's going to do one. We know that. We know Peru will probably do one. Uh, and there are a couple of others talking about it as well. So um, wrestle them in, Maria, wrestle them in. Count on us for that, Sean. We are already working a lot on that, actually. Lots to be coming as news in the future as well. Hema, turning to you on the private sector, and also you were mentioning a bit about this new asset class. I wanted a bit of your reflections uh, coming more on these details on how can we make the local investors, how can we develop the local markets, uh, developing this notion of asset class, what, what is there that we can offer? You mentioned the, the guarantees and some of the instruments, um, maybe our closing remarks, uh, maybe mentioning more about all these efforts that have been ongoing already. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, we've been working in the last, yeah, yeah, we've been working in the last years on developing the, the new asset class together with you, with the, with the IDB. Basically, we do it through the three kind of things. First of all, we provide different kind of financial products. As I already mentioned, in most of the cases, uh, we have been uh, buying um, entirely or partially the issuance of these bonds to really send a signal to the market and to have demonstration effect, which basically had an objective to bring a, a different kind of, um, of investors, uh, not only international, but also locally. So we bought uh, part of that uh, issuance to attract others, uh, especially because uh, we have been working on the first issuance of different kind of, of, uh, of bonds. Uh, for example, in the, as I mentioned, the first green bond in the, in the housing industry in the region, the first gender bond in the region, the first uh, outcome-based gender bond in the world, and different, I mean, the, the, the first social bond in Peru, and so many first, first, first. So we wanted to create a demonstration effect, and in that regard, we uh, wanted to act as an investor, not, not only as an structure. So on one hand, as I said, uh, financial products, both um, uh, assets and investors, but also sometimes we provide guarantees. Uh, in most of the cases, we provide partial credit guarantees, which basically um, make um, possible to raise the, the local ratings and to attract in, um, institutional investors. As we know, uh, as of today, most of these investors are looking for uh, investment grade paper. So in order to reach the investment rate uh, rating, um, even locally, uh, you, need, uh, you need an enhancement. So we have provided uh, some enhancements. Uh, in other cases, we provided even a total credit guarantee. We did that in Brazil with the ventures of infrastructure, which as you know very well, the Brazilian uh, is, a, is a product to really uh, encourage uh, with some fiscal incentives the retail market to buy a sustainable infrastructure or infrastructure paper in general. So we have provided both um, um, partial and, and total guarantees. So those, those things are on the financial products. Later on, we do a lot of uh, technical cooperation and there we've been working closely with you um, in different kind of aspects. Um, on one hand, we, um, we help our clients to develop the framework uh, on others, we help them uh, to really bring um, second party opinions or even certifications. 
Um, and, and the third part is to create and to, to, to disseminate knowledge. Um, as we are creating these new asset classes, so today we have worked already with 20, only the, in, the, in the IDB together with you, we have counting for around 30% of the market. But when you are a first mover, you need a lot of training and a lot of knowledge. So I think we, are, we have to be really happy of all the work we have done in the IDB group to really develop these new asset classes. As I say, through financial products, uh, knowledge creation and dissemination and uh, technical assistance. I think this tool uh, is, a, is a part of the, of the toolkit we have created both together, the IDB and the IDB Invest, to really encourage both issuers and investors to trust and to really uh, think in Latin America and the Caribbean green recovery as a great, great investment opportunity. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And it is a holistic approach. I think this is the beauty of it indeed. Uh, Juan Pablo, to close the remarks, I mean, uh, I started talking about the climate summit uh, last week. How do you see uh, this ambitious plan of IDB towards the future? And particularly from IDB point of view on climate finance, how can we move ahead in promoting further this scale up investments, be it on the private sector, be it on the sovereigns that Sean was provoking? How can we move ahead? Thank you, Maria. Um, for uh, everybody that is an uh, external audience, uh, we have an internal target at the ADB group uh, to have a 30% climate finance uh, as a group, but individually, private sector, public sector, and IDB lab. Uh, as all the MDBs uh, last year due to, due to COVID, it was very hard to reach the goal. Um, in particular, because the liquidity instruments that we designed were not supposed to include climate. It was totally to address uh, COVID needs and liquidity for, for public sector. Having said that, we're working very strong as a group to, to get back to that 30% of climate finance and to start a process to be parties aligned. Uh, Mauricio, our president, has asked the ADB group to start taking a look of uh, our operational challenges to be able to start being aligned in 2023, we have to, to define the idea, um, the date to that. And as you mentioned, uh, there will be a key opportunity to link the agenda of climate, biodiversity, natural disasters, resiliency uh, with, with the green recovery. Uh, the other key issue that I think is very important to know, Maria, uh, we had a strong mandate after the annual meeting of the bank to continue uh, thinking about a capital increase. I think that's gonna be fundamental to think bigger about uh, not only climate finance, but also how we can support the public sector and the private sector in the future in the transition needed to be Paris aligned and also for, for innovation. So I think we're gonna have a lot of work these, these five years and I'm very happy that this is gonna be one of the pillars of, of the vision of, of the bank. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful panel. It's great to be part of this team and doing a lot of work to promote the green bonds market. I pass back to you, Adela. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And thank you very much to our panelists for a fascinating conversation. We had more than 170 people connected and having many questions. We will take care of them eventually, we promise. But now it's time to finish. And I would like to invite Moises Schwartz manager of, of the institutions for development department to give us the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adela. Well, we are, we are reaching the end of our program. So only a few comments before closing. First of all, many, many thanks to Juan, Maria, Alex, and the whole team for all your work to make this happen. As noted in our panel discussions, the green and sustainable bond market is a key instrument to support the Latin America and Caribbean region to scale up the needed investments for its sustainable economic recovery. In fact, we see that investors worldwide are increasingly looking for sustainable and green assets, that the thematic bond market has been increasing exponentially, reaching a record aggregate issuance of $1.1 trillion by the end of 2020. We have also seen a substantial increase in thematic bonds in the LAC region with an aggregate volume of $30 billion in 2020, 
25% issued only during 2020, and 80% of the total issuance being green issuance. Still, while our region has a huge potential to promote sustainable investments with the largest biodiversity pool, a broad clean energy matrix, and important investment gaps for climate resilient infrastructure, the region so far has only accounted for about 2% of the global green and sustainable markets. These trends, as discussed today, offers a huge opportunity to be further leveraged and the market can grow at least threefold. I was glad to see from the conversation how the IDB group has already played a significant role in helping the region's green capital market by supporting issuers directly to issue green bonds through technical and financial assistance and guarantee instruments. I am proud to note we have already supported more than 30% of the region's sustainable issuances by volume and have accompanied, among others, sovereigns, national development banks, and private financial institutions. As the green and sustainable bond market evolves, it is important to maintain and support its credibility as investors want to ensure that bond proceeds are used for their intended purpose of supporting green projects and want to know what the impacts of such investments are. In fact, the relevance of transparency and the need for harmonization on green bond reporting is emerging as a key aspect for the market to evolve. And this is what the initiative of the green bond transparency platform is looking to support. That is, it supports the harmonization and standardization efforts for green bond reporting on the issue of proceeds and environmental performance of green bonds. For issuers, the green bond transparency platform takes into account the reporting needs for each issuer and the reporting commitments. For external reviewers, it provides a way to reflect the conclusions of the reviews in a standardized way for the pre and post issuance process. For investors, it provides a simple way to understand the impact of their investments. Furthermore, in the process, it can also inform regulatory discussions on ongoing taxonomies in our region, as well as regulatory initiatives outside of our region, for instance, in the EU Green Bond Standard to support harmonization of approaches. I am glad to note the array of key market actors who have contributed to the platform from the conceptual phase onward. With strong technical partners such as the Climate Bond Initiative, Luxembourg Stock Exchange LGX Hub, NASDAQ Sustainable Bond Network, and KFW and the Lagreen Fund, I am certain that the platform can contribute and have an impact beyond our region. As a public good tool, it is inclusive, and we thank our donor partners the German International Climate Initiative and the Swiss Stake Secretariat for Economic Affairs for jump-starting the support for this initiative, which allows all market actors to access the data free of charge. Latin America is ready to get back on investors' radars, providing a broad range of green and sustainable investment opportunities. And we believe the Green Bond Transparency Platform is one important step forward in demonstrating the potential of our market. The IDB group has a strong commitment to leverage our efforts to support the green finance market in the region. We have an important role to play to facilitate the understanding of technically complex investment opportunities in green as well as in biodiversity and adaptation finance, which are crucial to address climate change. The Green Bond Transparency Platform is part of this ambition. We are committed to keep pace with the latest market trends and developments and expect the platform to become a benchmark for the region with the potential for replication in other regions. This is a great opportunity for all participants in this event and for all market actors to join a pioneering initiative. This launch event is just the first step of this initiative. We will continue our work and dialogue with all market actors to pursue our goal, that the Green Bond Transparency Platform Initiative becomes a tool that contributes to scale up the green bond market, promoting environmentally sustainable investments in the region. 
I invite you to join us in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Moises, and thank you once again to all our panelists and our audience for joining us today. We invite you to explore the platform again, greenbondtransparency.com, and to keep in touch. By the time being, enjoy the rest of the day and please stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>